story time in Seacliff and we have an amazing clue. Look at this clue that we had gotten from Oberon yesterday. Yes, indeed, it is the Grinch. And the name of the book is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Mm -hmm. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on right. It could be perhaps his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, and even Eve, hating, hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in the town. For he knew every Who down there in Whosville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. Oh, they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew. Oh, merry, merry, all the who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys and then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, noise, noise. That's one thing he hated, the noise, the noise, the noise. Then the so Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast. They'd feast, feast, feast. They would feast on Who pudding and rare Who roast beef, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every Who, down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing, they'd stand hand in hand, and the who would start singing. <gasps> they'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, sing, sing. And the more the Grinch thought of the who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now, I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea. Oh, an awful idea. Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what I'll do. The Grinch laughed in his throat and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. <laughs> and he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around. But since reindeers are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max and he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some more empty sacks on the ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, giddy up! And the sleigh moved down toward the homes where the who lay a snooze in their town. Oh, all their windows were dark and quiet snow filled the air and all the who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without a care. When he came to the little house on the square, this is number one, said Grinchy Claus himself, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. He slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace, flew where the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. And he slithered and he slunk in a smile most unpleasant around the whole room. 
and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and planes and plums. He stuffed them in bags and the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the ice box and he took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He even took the roast beef. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why that Grinch even took their last can of Who hash. And he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up me. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove and he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around last and he, small, he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who. She was not much more than two. And the Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who'd gotten out of bed for a cup of water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? Oh, but you know, the old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Oh, my sweet little tot. Oh, said the fake, fake Santa Claus. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop. My dear, I'll fix it up there and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child and he patted her head. He got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her pup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. <gasps> then the last thing he took was the log for their fire. He went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And one speck of food that he left in the house was a little crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to all the other who houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other who's mouses. Well, it was a quarter past dawn and all the who's were still abed and all the who's still snooze. He packed up his sled. He packed it with their presents, their ribbons, their wrappings, the tags, uh, and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mr. Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's, he cried. They're finding out now. No Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hung open a minute or two. And then the Who's down in Who'sville will cry, boo-hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started low and it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so. It was, it was Mary, very. He stared down at Whoville and the Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook when he saw the shocking surprise. <gasps> Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes, or bags. He puzzled three hours till his puzzling was sore. Mm, then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps is a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew 
three times its size that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys, the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch carved the roast beef. Oh, what a story. It was a long story, but I think it was a very good one. And I hope you agree. Now our birthday today, we have a birthday boy. His name is Christopher. And he's going to have a lovely, lovely Christmas birthday with his brother, Joseph, mm -hmm. and his mom, Christina, his dad, Anthony. They're going to have a delicious cake, but we're going to have a cake with them too. Let's find out who it is. All right, let's find out. Are, are you ready for the vanilla? First vanilla is Clara. Turns out we've been wrong. Clara loves vanilla, as does KJ and Scarlett and Rafa and Henry and Rocky, Joseph, Harris, Marta, Graham and Audrey and Lila, Hudson and Marlo, Maxine, Lucy and Frida. Yes. Now for the chocolate. Martha, Molly, Alice, James and Anna, Ben and B, Bevy and Henry, Riley, Tate, Sophia, and India. 12 for chocolate and 16 for vanilla. Mm. All right, it's a vanilla cake, Christopher. I hope you like vanilla. Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Christopher. Happy birthday to you. All right. Thank you, cameraman Dan. Thank you, Oberon. Do you have a clue for tomorrow? I love today's clue. So perfect, right? Okay. Oh, okay. This is familiar. We've had this before. It's our friend Peter. He's got his snowsuit on. I wonder what the story's going to be. All right. Thank you again. And remember, I love you all very, very much.